know who caused Hawaiian missile panic, you won't believe what's happened to them. This weekend, panic gripped Hawaii as a false missile alert was sent to every citizen. Families were terrified. People called their loved ones, believing it would be the last time they spoke with them. After 30 minutes of chaos, we learned it was a mistake. People started to demand answers, blaming everyone including President Donald Trump. It turns out a specific person was to blame, but how will the government proceed? These kinds of alerts were designed for a reason. Federal and local government agencies have plans in place in the event of the worst. Our defense systems are supposed to protect our country from attack. Yet, this event showed some major flaws in the system. Most notably, a lack of direction for citizens, if an attack occurs. People didn't know what to do. Many panicked. Apparently, Hawaii didn't have other measures in place, such as instructions for where citizens should go. Even with a false alarm, people should have had a plan ready. Instead, the state was unprepared. Now, we know the false alarm was literally caused by someone pushing the wrong button, but it wasn't a high-ranking official. And, it certainly wasn't President Donald Trump. Turns out, it was a rank-and-file civil defense employee working for the state. A mistake like this is pretty serious, but the person, who remains anonymous, won't be facing any serious penalties. Not only are they still working, but they remain in the same department. A spokesman with the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency confirmed to Fox News, the employee who issued the alert has been temporarily reassigned pending the outcome of our internal investigation. He will still report to work within our emergency operations center, but in a different capacity that does not provide access to the warning system. Residents and tourists alike were rattled after the mistaken alert was blasted out to cell phones across the islands with a warning to seek immediate shelter and the ominous statement, this is not a drill. State officials later said the unnamed employee doing a routine test during a shift change at the emergency management agency mistakenly hit the live alert button. Rather than triggering a test of the system, it went into actual event mode, Fox News previously reported. Vern Riyagi, who oversees the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, EMA, said at a news conference late Saturday that to trigger the alert, there is a two-step process involving only one employee, who both triggers the alarm, then also confirms it. Source, Fox News I don't know about you, but if an employee causes panic across an entire state, and country, he shouldn't have a job. This is not like getting an order wrong at a restaurant. This is civil defense. The stakes are pretty high. Anything could have happened as a result of this mistake. People could have started rioting in the streets. Who knows? Older citizens could have had heart attacks from the stress. The event was an embarrassment for the entire country. Yet, the employee is not fired. The idiot bosses he works for still have him in emergency operations center. Something tells me, he's not fit for that kind of job. Keep in mind the tensions people are feeling right now, thanks to North Korea. The rogue nation has been promising to attack us for a while. Each day, we learn about new attempts by Kim Jong-un to improve his weapons. Hawaii would be an obvious target, being in the Pacific. This false alarm came at the absolute worst time imaginable. There should be serious consequences for the person who caused it to happen. But, it gets worse. Just think about what would happen now, should Hawaii actually be attacked? Will citizens take a real warning seriously? Or did this employee just create a real-life version of the boy who cried wolf? That's the bigger problem. Should North Korea actually make good on their threats, Hawaii might not even be prepared. A new warning might be ignored by many. Disaster would result. This event should be a lesson for all of us. Not only must we be prepared for the worst, but our government needs to raise the bar. Incompetence cannot be tolerated within our government, especially in defense systems. That may have been allowed in past administrations, but those days are over, are over.